Hello everyone, this video is going to be about setting up DynamoDB local through a Docker container and interacting with it through the Bodo 3 SDK in Python. So I'm going to be doing this on a Windows machine, but the steps are the same if you're on Mac or Linux. For those of you that don't know what DynamoDB local is, it's a tool created by AWS that allows you to create a local instance of DynamoDB that runs on your personal machine. This allows you to create tables, insert data, perform queries, and play with the large number of settings that DynamoDB offers. And after you're done, you can just stop the process and the entire table goes away. What this does is that it gives you a good opportunity to get familiar with how DynamoDB works without needing an AWS account. So the first thing we need to do is head over to the Docker website and download the DynamoDB local Docker image. So here I am on the Docker website and I'm at the DynamoDB local image section. Uh, so here's some contextual information about the product. Obviously we got the pull command over here. I'm just gonna copy that to clipboard because we're gonna need that in a moment. Also gives you some instructions on how to run it. Uh, we're gonna be using that later as well. So make sure you have that pull command copied. I'm gonna copy it now and let's head over to the terminal and download the image. So I already have it downloaded, so I'll probably just get some redundant message here. Yeah, so it's up to date. If this is your first time running it, you'll just get a download prompt. Just wait a few minutes. The file is about 600 to 800 megabytes, so it may take you a little bit. Uh, the second thing we need to do is install Bodo 3, and I'm gonna be doing that through uh, pip, which is the Python package manager. So I'm just gonna say pip install Bodo 3. Again, I already have it installed, which you see requirement already satisfied. So it's not gonna download anything for me, but for you, if you don't, then this would be a useful command. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is actually start the container. And we're gonna be doing that by running the command that we see here. So I'm just gonna copy this out. What this is gonna do is launch a instance on port 8000 of our local machine. And then we're gonna connect to that instance a little bit later on in our Python code. So let's grab that make sure you copy that, go back into your terminal. I'm just gonna paste that in and okay, that's pretty much it. There's no uh, prompt or no success message. If you see the screen that looks like this, it means that you're ready to go. Uh, so that's it for actually launching the container. Now we just need to write our code to actually interact with it. Okay, so let's head over to IntelliJ now. So I just have a pretty blank project here, just a main method that I'm gonna be writing all this code in. So the first thing we need to do is import that Bodo 3 library and get rid of the hello world. Okay, so uh, the absolute first step is to create a DynamoDB client. So let's just put some notes down here about what we're doing. So let's say ddb is equal to bodo3.resource and we're gonna say dynamodb. Uh, so that's the, the client name, obviously dynamodb. Now there's some specific parameters that we need to pass into this. Uh, so let's go through them one by one. The first one is endpoint underscore URL and that's gonna be the local host port 8000 that the DynamoDB local process is running on. So we wanna say HTTP colon slash slash localhost 8000. And if you swap this out with any other port, just make sure that you change it here. Okay, and the second thing that we need to do is pass in a region name. And the value can just be any dummy value. It doesn't need to be real. This is just necessary for the client. Uh, the third thing, again, it's a dummy value is your AWS access key ID. AWS access key ID. And again, dummy value. And AWS secret access underscore key, also a dummy value. Now, if you have your region name, your access key ID, and your secret access key defined in your AWS config file through the CLI, you won't need to provide this. All you need to provide is DynamoDB and endpoint URL. But if you don't, uh, then you'll need to specify these when you're setting up your client. Also, another pro tip, if you're doing this on Windows, I did run into some issues with this uh, regarding time zones when I tried to create a table. So if you're on Windows, go ahead and change your local date time time zone to UTC. Um, for whatever reason, that helps get around the problem of uh, creating your tables. Okay, so that's pretty much it for setting the client. Uh, the second thing we wanna do is actually create the table now. So create the table. So this is gonna be a transactions table, like credit card transactions or purchase transactions, however you wanna think about it. So I'm gonna say ddb.create underscore table. And so there's a bunch of things we need to pass in here. So the first one is table name, and I'm gonna call mine transactions. Okay, and the second is attribute definitions. 
So in your table, if you're going to be using any, um, well, obviously you need a hash key, but if you're going to be using range key, any indices like a global secondary index or a local secondary index, you need to define the types in a way similar to what I'm going to be doing now for the hash key. So this accepts an array. And so what you need to do is provide it with an object. And so for each object here, for each key that you're defining, you need to provide it with the attributes name. And so my, um, my primary key or hash key is going to be the transaction ID. So that's what I'm going to name it here. And you need to provide it with a type to, help to tell Dynamo if it's a string, if it's a number, it's a Boolean, whatever it is. Uh, so you need to say attribute type and it's a string. So S for string. Okay, so that's for the attribute definition. Just move that down a little bit so we don't get confused. The next thing is the key schema. Uh, okay, so this is where we're actually defining what the hash key is going to be. Uh, so it's pretty similar to what we just had. Let me just fix the formatting here. All right, cool. Uh, similar, we have an attribute name, same as above. It's gonna be transaction ID. And here we're gonna specify what this value actually corresponds to. So it's a key and we're gonna say key type and it is a hash key. Uh, so just a kind of a refresher on Dynamo, you only need to specify uh, your keys in this case. You don't need to specify any other attribute columns. So if you have other data that's not a key, um, that would be a schema list in this sense. So you can, you don't have to provide any definition of what those fields or columns are going to look like. It's pretty flexible. You only need to do it for the um, keys or the, the parameters that either are going to be a hash key, a range key, or any kind of index. So just a little reminder there. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is provide a provisioned throughput for our table. So we say provisioned throughput. And so this is an object as well. And we need to provide it with read capacity units, capacity units. And you can set this to whatever you want. 10 is fine for this example. I'm just gonna be doing some basic operations. Also need some write capacity units. And again, 10 is fine for this example. So this looks good. I'll just get the formatting in order. Uh, so we have a table that should have been created with this command. Let's just put a little uh, print here to say whether or not we successfully created the table, successfully created table. So we know when we're debugging this, what's going on. Uh, so the next step is to actually acquire a reference to the table that we just created. So we're gonna say table is equal to ddb.table and then you put the name of your table. So mine's called transactions like I have up here. So we're using transactions down here again. And then um, we're almost getting ready to insert data into the table. So now we want to actually define our input object. So I'm just gonna say input, I'm gonna use a Python dictionary. Let's say the transaction ID is the key and the value is, I don't know, 980, whatever you want there. Uh, the state of this transaction is pending. And let's say the amount is, I don't know, $50, something like that, right? Uh, okay, so now we're actually ready to insert data into the table. So let's say insert data. So we want to use the uh, put item command. So we're gonna say table dot put item. And we're gonna say item is equal to input. And that's the dictionary object that we just created in the previous step. Okay, and so let's just put another message there. So successfully put item. And the next step is to actually scan the table or to see what's inside of it because there's no real way to actually look at what's in your table using DynamoDB local out of the box. So you may want to define a helper method just to scan your table periodically when you're testing this stuff. So let's just uh, do that now. So scan table. Uh, okay, so we're gonna say scan response is equal to table.scan table name is equal to transactions. And then now we have a um, response object. We need to extract out the items that are in the response. So we just say items equals scan response. The key is items. And now we want to iterate over all the items. We only have one, so it's pretty straightforward. So for item in items, oops, just want to say print item. Okay, so that looks good for the scanning. We're just gonna print out whatever we put in. Let's just take a look at this again and go over what we did. Imported the library, created a client on the port that you uh, specified when you ran the start command. Creating the table, typo, that's great, fix that. Uh, transactions table, transaction ID is the attributes, okay. 
And then we are inserting data. We're gonna put that item there. Then we're gonna scan and look at the result. All right, so everything looks good. Let's test this out now. So I need a different terminal shell here so that I can see what's going on. So, okay, that looks good. Let's just say python test.py and hopefully, there we go. So we successfully created the table. Uh, we successfully put the item. And then here is the item that we put into the table. Uh, so that was uh, just an example of how to interact with some light operations. Keep in mind that if you try to run this again, it's gonna try and create your table again. This state persists. So for instance, if I do this, it's gonna say cannot create pre-existing table. So the table persists from run to run. So if you wanna blow it all away, all you need to do is go and stop the container and then restart it, control C. And if you restart it again, you'll just get a brand new instance and you can add the same table, or you can just come over here and comment the create table section out. I'll be putting the link to this code in the description section so you can play with it. So if you like this video, I have many more on DynamoDB that you should check out. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on next week's video. Thanks so much, folks, and I'll see you next time.